all in to get this done in November. It's gonna be a fight. One play at a time. Stay together. No matter what happens out there, be Notre Dame. November football, South Bend. The air is crisp, the leaves are bright. The magic awaits each Saturday night. It's a special season and the Irish have been here before. Notre Dame's 2018 Fighting Irish are undefeated with head coach Brian Kelly with nine wins and are about to take on the visiting Florida State Seminoles. 25 years ago, the 9-0 Fighting Irish of 1993 fought the same foe. I remember 93. The hype was real, the stakes were high. It was without question the game of the century. Notre Dame's brand in 93 was the same as it is right now, I think. It stands for excellence over time. It stood for the traditional power in college football. Notre Dame was, was the history of the sport. Florida State hadn't yet won a national championship. Bobby Bowden had come close, but he'd fallen short. And so they were still seeking that initial championship. The expectations were huge. Lou Holtz had this team rolling. They had come close to winning the national championship a couple of additional times since 1988. The fans expected this to be a terrific year, and they were waiting anxiously for Lou Holtz's second Notre Dame national championship. I mean, it was Notre Dame back in the early 90s. I mean, we were coming off of, you know, the 88 national championship. You expected to win at Notre Dame. I didn't think we'd lose a game, ever. I, I, I didn't think Forest State could beat us. I didn't think anybody was going to beat us. The captains, you had the Aaron Taylors, the Jeff Burrises. It was very clear that they had one thing on their mind. They felt like the year before they had let a game get away with the Michigan game to tie, and so they were all systems go on winning the national championship, and anything else was not going to be a good season. You can't perform well if you're afraid or if you're nervous about making a mistake. This is the time just to go out there and put on a show. Holtz had assembled an Irish squad that could entertain fans and dominate opponents. Notre Dame was ranked number two, but Florida State had expectations and weapons also. They were number one. Going into the 9-3 season, we knew we had a lot of guys coming back, experienced, you know, destined to win a championship. Florida State was a longtime football power, and in Bobby Bowden, you had a likable, good old boy coach. Florida State had never won the national championship under anybody, let alone Bobby Bowden, and folks were almost kind of hoping that Bobby was finally going to get his first national championship. But to do it, people thought they would have to beat Notre Dame in Notre Dame Stadium. You're a football player, and you have a, a, a and you want, and you want football. You need to know about Notre Dame. They had all the, the hype that you could possibly imagine. They were talking about them beating some of the worst teams in the NFL. They were a really good football team. We saw some of the scores. We kept up with other schools. They were putting up 40, 50 points like it was going out of style. There was no question that they were legit 24 future NFL draft picks. I mean, every position on that football team, offense, defense, and they had somebody with size, strength, speed, and athleticism. They did not have many weaknesses. Everybody's hyping these guys up. You know, the best team ever assembled is what everybody was telling us. I, I'm looking at the guys in my locker room, like, you know what, we're pretty damn good too. They had these two colorful characters as coaches. The teams were legitimately the two top teams in the country. That led to a lot of the hype, hence the game of the century. Okay, we acknowledge it right up front. Some hype is inevitable in a situation like this. I had just left campus six months earlier and was in my first year in the league, but I was distracted that week. The hype surrounding number two Notre Dame hosting number one Florida State was as rampant as any hype college football had seen. The media hype was very over the top. 
you can tell, this is not just a football game. This is a happening. And if there was ever any question about this being one of the biggest games in Notre Dame Al history. Al Gore, Andre Agassi, some others got turned down. Any big Notre Dame game is going to have a certain kind of atmosphere and all that tradition and all that history baked into it. It doesn't have to be the game of the century or the game of the decade because certainly it is the most anticipated college football game of the year. It was more than just a big football Saturday or a traditional game, all those things that are always in play at Notre Dame. This one was the whole country is watching and this is going to be our moment. With the cast of characters, the setting, and the circumstances in place for a memorable game. Everybody was here. New York Times, Sports Illustrated, and no longer a fledgling, but an up-and-coming network, ESPN, took their game day show on the road for the first time ever. Game day was not a thriving, heavily watched show back in those days. We knew that it could work. We just had to convince the bosses that there was a game in the regular season big enough to warrant spending $50,000 to take it on the road, which for them to make that kind of financial commitment, the game had to justify it. The hype had to justify it. And we saw this as a great opportunity. Only in college football can you have a regular season event of this magnitude because other sports settle things with the playoff and it's much more special, of course, to have it on a college campus. We had no idea how to stage the thing. I'll take Florida State, 31, 30! Hey! 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 I'll take Notre Dame, 31, 30! <laughs> the fans didn't know what to expect when they showed up, the ones that did. We had no clue what was involved in putting together a road show. And thankfully, management bought in and said, you yeah, know, well, let's try this. That game sort of provided the impetus to make the financial commitment to take game day on the road for the first time. It's tough to not be influenced by this environment here. You're pretty sure that Florida State can cope with the mystique and cope with all the aspects of playing a game in Notre Dame until you get out here and until you see the pep rally and the spirit, and all of a sudden, I know you wanted to change your fit. There was so much hype around this game. It was nothing I'd ever seen before. This was a different, you know, animal. Usually for a game weeks, it, the, the, the crowds for a home game would generally start to come in Friday. You'd have a lot of people milling around campus, and it was a little more difficult to move around and get to classes or whatever. This particular week, it started Tuesday. When we would go to practice, RVs were already in. Like our parking lot was already packed from a week before the game. And we'd walk out to practice and there's hundreds and hundreds of people. It, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Drove 800 miles on Thursday to come up and see this ball game. Been thinking about it since last March. This has been the ball game on my mind. I've never seen it like this. This is the worst I've ever seen. And I hope we'll ever see it. Uh, it was definitely not a typical game week. Coach Holtz didn't shy away from it. He knew that this was going to be a big week for us. And this was one of those defining games that could really establish a legacy. I think we all embraced that, that moment. It was like a very focused, disciplined type of preparation that week. Uh, it, was, it was very, very intense that week. Uh, everything changed. Once we got on the practice field, uh, it was business. And I remember Coach Holtz brought in those speakers and he was blaring that chant. Every day, every practice. Man, it was electric by Friday afternoon because that's when Florida State came in. And they, they came in on these buses, I'll never forget. In come these buses, and back then you could literally pull straight up into the stadium on those buses, and out comes Florida State. And they all get off with these green hats with that nasty spear on top. And FSU, we were like, oh, hell no. That was it. That was it for us. We, we saw that, and word spread like, Wildfire. By the time that pep rally came around, the entire campus was ready to go. When they walk off the field and you take these emblems off the helmet, you got a golden helmet left! And that's what's gonna happen Saturday! 
pep rallies in the 90s were different. Florida State said they don't know anything about Mystique and they're not worried about the Mystique at Notre Dame. And I find no problem with them saying that. I respect that. They've never been around Mystique. How would they recognize it? There was no social media. So there wasn't that curtain of caution that you had to have because you're representing the University of Notre Dame. It was more, we're gonna go out and we're gonna kick somebody's rear end. We're here because we earned it, we belong here, and tomorrow we will prove it. I remember watching the pep rally with Lee Corso, my sidekick on game day, Florida State graduate, ex-player. He thought the Knowles would go in and win. We watched the energy in that pep rally. Holtz in the speech, the students, and I think he came out of there asking, can I change my pick? I don't think you ever ought to be held accountable for what you say at the pep rally, but I want to tell you this. There is something special about this place. Whether anybody else believes or not, we believe it, and that's important. The media treated this game like no other. Every network had its say. And NBC's production team filmed an emotional, cinematic open, the likes of which had not been seen before in college football. One of the things that we always wanted to do at NBC was come on the air with a big, a big tease, opening tease. When summer is finally forgotten, as daylight dwindles sooner each day, look around the corner. Just beyond Main Street, chances are there's a game in a backyard. One of the ideas that we came up with was um, bringing it back to uh, all the players' childhood where uh, you know they dreamed of playing in, in big games like this. Opening segments for a broadcast are usually 45 seconds to a minute. This one ran two minutes and 55 seconds, was brilliantly written and narrated by none other than Bob Costas. When I first looked at it, I truly thought it was over the top. And what is it now, 25 years later, occasionally I still hear about it. Number one, Florida State, and number two, Notre Dame. The coming of a day dreamed of in backyards just around the corner from Main Street. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Costas, and okay, we acknowledge it right up front. Some hype is inevitable in a situation like this. Each team is 9-0. Each is riding an overall 16-game winning streak. And I'll tell you, the tension between these two is real and powerful and explosive. And now everything that can be said has been said. Everything that can has been written has been written. The sun comes out. Despite a productive opening series, Notre Dame was stopped short of the end zone and forced to punt. The Florida State offense took charge and gave the Irish a wake-up call. Charlie Ward has not been intercepted in his last 144 pass attempts. Well, Charlie was one of the first uh, really dual threat type of quarterbacks that, that I remember. He was the next best thing in the, in the world. He could hurt you with his arms, hurt you with his legs. They, they didn't run the option. They were a, a drop back, throw the ball all over the field. I mean, they were almost a fun and gun before the fun and gun was, was out there. Florida State went right down the field on us and scored a touchdown. And you're thinking, oh goodness, this, uh, you know, this might be a track meet. We went out and, and played a really, really good football team. And that is right down the middle. And um, we really, really put it to him. And here is again to Beckham. He slips to the outside. He's got the first down. You know, we started playing Notre Dame football. We just started running and grinding, you know, using those big guys up front. Just started road grading. They're quick fast, explosive defensive front. They just never seen anybody as physical as us. Notre Dame continues to flex out their tight end, trying to get a mismatch in the secondary. Pass is complete to Clint Johnson. And we ran a play where we faked an option one way, 
and our flanker runs the opposite way, and he took it for that first touchdown, and it pretty much shocked Florida State because they thought at that point they were invincible. The receiver wide to the near side. The tight end is Oscar McBride. He is spilled, and we're looking at a reverse on the pitch. It is Durrell has three blockers in front to the 20s. He's going to score. He's out. Our mindset was, you know, we're bigger than you. We're stronger than you. We're going to run it right at you. Stop us if you can. And they couldn't stop us that day. Boyd to throw. And he is set. He fires. Pass is complete. Kevin Knox ball is loose. And Notre Dame has it. We were balling. Florida State was so good, you always felt they had a chance to come back. But at the point where it was 24 to seven, it did look like it was Notre Dame's game. Charlie Ward woke up, and it was what we had seen all year, which was that fast break offense. This isn't hard. You rush three and backpedal everybody else into the end zone. Tipped. Oh, oh my goodness. Kez McCarthy. Oh, my. It just seemed like the momentum went to their side. Maybe Coach Holtz realized, like, man, we shouldn't have <laughs> taken our foot off the pedal. They score a touchdown to keep themselves in the game, but time is running out. Our defense got to stop and we're able to get the ball back. Uh, I'm not sure how much time was left on the clock, but we were able to drive the ball down the field. And all of a sudden, you got a seven point game and a lead that felt comfortable for Notre Dame was evaporating and the tension was back in that building. Florida State somehow gets to the shadow of Notre Dame's goal line in the waning seconds. The score, 31-24, the time, three seconds. And this is a moment that memories are made of. You know, there was a lot of emotions because we almost got a sack. So it was like, oh my God, we got it. And then, oh, typical Charlie Ward. And then it's like, uh-oh, he's, he's got room. You know, is he going to run? Is he going to try to throw it? Then when he let the ball go, it's like, oh my God, please, please. Everybody swarmed the field, and you're thinking, hey, we did it. We knew we had ascended to number one in the country. Um, I almost wanted to shed a tear. Coach, you've been involved in some games in your day. Where does this 
This was just a great football game. I compliment Florida State, Charlie Ward. They refused to quit. Our players didn't either. It's one game and I think lived up to all the hype. The Irish were number one for the first time since NBC began broadcasting home games nationally. But seven days later, rival Boston College, ranked 17th in the nation under head coach Tom Coughlin, upset the Irish with a last second field goal and spoiled their bid for that year's title. Ironically, Florida State went on to claim the year's championship since they had a better loss to Notre Dame. And now, 25 years later, the Irish, 9-0 again, take on the Seminoles in another season. The 2018 Fighting Irish football team has had a seven-day window. So this week, this is the most important game of the year for Notre Dame. A rivalry renewed to kick off the 2018 season. And here come the Irish taking the field for the first time this season right now. <laughs> To Paul Armstrong, touchdown Notre Dame. And that's Alohi Gilman. He's under pressure. Down he goes. And he's sacked by Jerry Tillery. How good are the Fighting Irish this season? Wisher hangs on. This is good old-fashioned Notre Dame football. Let's go to work. The Fighting Irish playing at Virginia Tech for the first time ever. Yeah. I mean, this is why you play this yeah. game. Yeah. Fumble. Notre Dame has it. Julian Love down the sideline. Four quarters of Notre Dame football. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.